Maker, welcome back. If you're new, I'm Monica Bryant, and this channel is a living document of my journey as a filmmaker. Today, I'm gonna be showing you everything that's in my camera bag. I bought this camera bag. I bought this off of Amazon. It was with the camera and the kit lens, it was 900 and some change. It is a bundle that you can't really get anymore, but Amazon has other bundles. This is also not an Amazon sponsorship or anything. I'm not sponsored by Amazon. I do have uh, affiliate links in the description. So if you buy something that I use using my link, I might get some change out of it, but they are not sponsoring me. Like I said, I bought this bundle with my Canon EOS Rebel T7i. I'm filming the overhead with my iPhone. Here's my iPhone. I'm currently using my iPhone to control my light. There is a lot going on, okay? So when you see overhead shots, that is the iPhone SE 2020. In my backpack, I also have some stuff that didn't come with it. But what did come with it was this Rode microphone. Sometimes I use this by plugging it into the recorder. That's um, typically how I use it. When I plug it into the camera directly and like sit it on top, it looks cool, but there's like a weird kind of feedback thing that I don't really like. So lately I haven't used it, but it's a tool. I also have my Xacti CG6. This camera films in like 4-3 ratio where it's just like a square. And honestly, um, this is what I was trying to use like back in the day and it just, it didn't look good and it, it wasn't the quality that I wanted. But now that it's kind of retro and cool, I can reuse it. So I keep the battery charger and the camera with me if you're if you want to see what this looks like i have a video on my channel where i'm reading a poem that i wrote which was like a, a journal rant if you will excuse me if i'm sweating it is so hot in here oh my God. this did come in the kit so i have this macro lens but i guess it's supposed to make things on a macro scale I tried using it, but the problem is, is it cuts everything off. Like it, it cuts the corners off and it makes it look like a vignette, which I don't really vibe with. So I haven't used these for anything. I think if I was doing something where I wanted like a stylistic choice, like this is a, a telephoto, but it also does the, it does that vignette thing on the corners where it makes the corners all fuzzy and weird. Not really into that, but that's what it is. Um, I actually have a real telephoto lens. So I bought this for myself as a birthday present this year. And it's the, what is it? It's a 75 to 300 millimeter telephoto lens. It's good for like zooming into things that are really far away. I'll make a video about it if you want, but this lens is super cool. And when it's on the camera, it looks pro. It's just, it's not, it's not being used to its full capacity because a T7i can't really show you the beauty of this lens. I would need like one of the more advanced Canons, but you know, when I get some more money, I'll get one of those. Another lens I have is this 50 millimeter lens. Again, my camera doesn't show like the true beauty of this lens because my camera is too small. If I had a bigger camera, you would see the true beauty of what this lens can do. We work with what we have in this house. It also came with these filters. So this one is just, it's supposed to block out like UV light. It's basically clear, but you can use it just as a way to protect the lens of your camera. The one I have on there right now is the one that's like shaded. It looks like shades, but I use it to like make the color of my skin look good. And I also have this purple one. It looks really cool. I just need to figure out stylistically how I'm gonna use it. These are different magnifying lenses that I can put on my camera 
to shoot extreme close-ups and get things in detail, which is really cool. I've used it a couple of times. I've used it for some vlogs and things, um, getting extreme close-ups, but there's just different, like this one would be like just a little close-up. You get four in the pack. And honestly, if you ordered another kit on Amazon, you could probably get these. It's just that the specific one that I ordered is not available anymore, which is unfortunate, but whatever. That's fine. I also have my drone in here. So I was keeping my drone in the box, but now I keep it in my backpack. So I have the controller, which is bigger than the drone, whatever. I have the controller here. And then I have my drone in the other pocket. My drone. I love my drone, you guys. I've crashed it a few times and it's kind of broken, but I still like it very much. Please. Okay. I also have this plastic Ziploc bag that's just full of like small things. Like I have propellers, extra propellers for my drone. I have um, SD card cases in here. I have my um, certificate of registration for flying my drone. I have a cord to charge my drone. I have a card reader, cords. Um, this is to hold a microphone. It's for my shotgun mic, which I don't have and I don't use anymore because I don't like it. But this is just for all the cords and extra like small things that I don't want to get lost. I just keep them in a Ziploc bag. And that is everything I have in my camera bag. Honestly, like I said earlier, I also use my phone. I use my phone a lot to record things. And iPhones are very great maybe androids too but i can't speak about androids because i don't own an android i've only had iphones for like the last decade but iphones this is the iphone se 2020 it's not even the most expensive or best iphone that you can get but you can still make really great videos using this phone and some of the videos on my channel that i've made i made with this phone and my previous iphone se which was from like seven years ago but this is it's a it's a good quality phone it shoots it could shoot in 4k it can shoot in 1080 it's a great phone so my point in showing you all this is that yes i bought this you know the drone was separate some things i already had some things i just accumulated over the years but honestly, if you want to start a journey of creating stuff, you can start where you are right now using what you have. Just take your phone out of your pocket and make something. You, it doesn't have to be fancy. It doesn't have to be extra. It doesn't have to be like the greatest thing ever. Just spend a lot of time making it because I think when you're using equipment that is cheap, and I'm just saying I'm using the word cheap as a way to describe like low quality equipment. But if you're using cheap equipment, I think the more time and planning you put into it, the more time you spend on the edit, the more time you spend on your sound effects and your angles and your shots, the more time you put into that stuff, it's gonna make it look good. It's going to be high quality and look good. You can shoot a video you could literally shoot a video with this cheap camera that's like 13 years old and make your video look good as long as your sound quality is there and it looks intentional and it looks like you tried. Like this is not this is not the best camera that you can use, but maybe I'll do a series where I shoot something completely on my iPhone or I shoot something completely on like a really low quality camera just to show that it could be a stylistic choice or it could be you know i'm using what i have but there's a lot of examples of people out there who have made things with what they had 
and still made it look great. Anyway, thank you so much for watching this video. If you like it, go ahead and give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment, subscribe, hit the bell so you're notified that my next video is out, which will be on a Sunday. It's Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. I make videos on Sunday. Come back next Sunday. I'll have something else for you. But until then, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.